everyone. So today I will be explaining what a lich is. Now, a lich has been used in fantasy and other fictional books uh, for many, many centuries. Um, but is such a thing real? Is there such thing as a lich? Uh, I'll go ahead and read what I have here for number one. Uh, a lich is a being made immortal, can't be killed by age, using a mastery of necromancy. Now, based on my study of uh, the occult and, diff uh, and different religious texts, uh, I have seen mentions of what a, of their being liches and uh, kind of what they are. I don't have a big background in uh, what in necromancy or liches in general, but I do know a little bit, and I've kind of uh, combined two different sources to give a theory that is uh, entirely mine, but the sources of knowledge uh, that I've combined are not mine. And um, I will go ahead and go to number two before I read uh, what uh, I got from a Hindu source. Now, the second thing I wrote was necrom necromancers speak about removing their soul and storing it separately to become a lich. Okay, now I'm going to tie these things together. Now, Swami Prabhupada, in uh, his book, Easy Journey to Other Planets, on page four, says... Uh, this antimaterial particle is within the material body. Because of the presence of this antimaterial particle, the material body is progressively changing from childhood to boyhood, from boyhood to youth to old age, after which the antimaterial particle leaves the old, unworkable body and takes up another material body. Once again, page four of Easy Journey to Other Planets. Um, and that's by Swami Prabhupada, once again. Now, he talks more about the antimaterial particle and really that being the soul, what travels from one body to the next. Uh, and he talks about uh, in more detail how this antimaterial particle wants to get out of the material, so that's why we experience age. Uh, and if we indulge in um, health, uh, health destructive uh, practices or we don't take care of ourselves, uh, it is more likely that the the material won't be able to encase the antimaterial particle for as long as it could have, uh, and we we see this to be the case. Um, and now I've always I've heard this for a while, and I've read this that liches remove their soul. Well, human beings or beings in general remove their soul and place it in some sort of external um, storage device or uh, or case. I'm not really sure how it works at all. But uh, I do know the basic idea. They remove it and place it in a case or a, an external place. And I always wondered, why was this so consistent about liches becoming liches? Because they removed their soul. And the soul being the antimaterial particle really makes sense if we think about it in this case. Um, if, if the antimaterial particle wants to get out of, your, of a material body or a material in general, then it will... It will try to shake us off through age. But if you take it out and are able to store it, yet it still exists on this plane, this material plane, uh, in some st storage device, then basically we should remain alive, yet we wouldn't uh, be victim to age. Um, I can't explain every single detail about this, but I believe that because our every soul is the antimaterial particle is connected to uh, the life of every of the person that. Um, exists in this material realm, and it that material particle, the antimaterial particle, staying here in this realm and not moving on to another realm or into another bo into another body or associated with another body, uh, keeps even if it's stored separately, um, keeps us tied to this material plane, and it really makes sense when we think about it in this instance, and it's it's very strange to think that there is a sort of magic necromancy, uh, of course when in regards to becoming a lich uh, on the in the left hand path using using uh, the magic of death or trying to beat death trying to um, keep oneself one ego intact uh, clinging to this realm wanting to remain the same person with the same ego uh, and not allowing your soul to move on because you, you're you're afraid of a different identity or you think that your identity dying is unacceptable um, that that is a it's a topic that him, humans have always talked, have always, have always talked about, have always uh, dreamed about uh, living longer lives, uh, living, uh, living in such a way that age no longer affects us, um, conquering, conquering death itself, so that we can keep the same identity, we can we can keep the same body, and some people are willing to go to any lengths in order to do that, um, but it always comes back to the fear of death. Uh, necromancers work with death magic. Uh, at least 
a lot of them, I think, work with death magic to conquer death. But really, they're, they're, they're mastering attachment to ego. They're attached to the identity that they are. They want to have the same thoughts, the same identity, and they don't want to allow the antimaterial particle to move on to another body. They don't allow their soul to move on to another body because they don't feel associated with the soul. They don't, they don't value it. They don't see it as the ideal. They see it as that which can tear us from what we value, the material world, the material body. And I doubt that any average necromancer who's just starting on the path um, really considers um, the implications of, of this sort of magic. And if they do, I'm, I'm not sure they truly understand the antimaterial particle, the soul, and this material realm. Uh, and surely there is a, a big piece of them that fears death. That's why they want to conquer it. Um, but if you conquer your ego, you won't have any fear for anything. But that's a whole other topic. Um, now I put the rune, of course it, the soul kind of comes out of the comes out of the body. However they do that magically or spiritually, I have no idea. Uh, it's stored in an external uh, casing. I'm not really sure how long this casing will last, or if somebody found that casing and destroyed it, busted it open, and destroyed the soul, uh, if the soul would just immediately move on. Um, but I have read that uh, necromancers hide the location of that external externalized soul uh, very carefully so that nobody will find it, otherwise a person could have complete control over them. And I use the rune for for constraint, which is not is, because I think it applies um, to constraining the soul, uh, putting it in a case that can't age or is resistant to its attempts to move on. Um, this this whole process uh, becoming a lich, uh, it's it's desired by many necromancers, if not all necromancers. Um, but the whole process seems absolutely terrible to me. Um, I've never well. In many years, I haven't um, been afraid of the destruction of myself, of, of death. Um, I, I'm more than willing to be a part of the cycle of life and death and to move on when it's my time. Um, I'm, not, I'm not clinging to this identity or this person or this body that I happen to be in. I didn't identify with the soul, the antimaterial particle, which means identify with that uh, that is eternal. And that is that which is uh, more foreign to me than uh, my ego, than uh, who I am in society, uh, my association with family, friends, uh, my political beliefs, my religious, spiritual beliefs. Um, all of these things are very identity oriented and the soul is not, uh, is not an identity. It is a piece uh, of a whole it's trying to get back to. It wants to get back to um, you know, the, the, the spirit beyond creation, which is God, the, the, the complete union back into where it started, uh, kind of like water coming down, evaporating from the ocean, uh, going, kind of traveling uh, in a cloud form to the top of a mountain, raining down, going through a river and going back to the ocean. It's, the, it's this cycle. Everything is trying to return to that ocean. And we're all, and our souls are trying to return uh, to, that, to that grand ocean from which they came. Uh, that's their natural, that's their natural and, um, uh, per, and driven purpose uh, that, that is their essence. And uh, I don't think we should, we should resist uh, this, this cycle. I think that we should go when it's our time. So these are just a few ideas of what I think a lich is, uh, what I think necromancers value, why I think people want to become immortal and keep this identity. And uh, I hope it's been interesting to you. Um, these are purely my own conclusions. You know, I could be wrong. Hell, I'm probably wrong about a lot of things. But uh, I could be wrong about everything that I believe. But this is the best explanation I can give on this topic that I have avoided for some time and that I felt that I needed to talk about in order to uh, basically get the, these ideas out there. But once again, if you want to learn more about the antimaterial particle and uh, easy travel to, um, uh, to other planets, uh, astral spiritual realm, I think is what he's speaking about. It's been a little while since I read this, but it's called Easy Journey to Other Planets, and it's by Swami Prabhupada. And uh, Swami Prabhupada is spelled Swami, P-R-A-B-H-U-P-A-D-A. -A -A. And uh, the, the uh, quote I got is on page four. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, if you have uh, any concerns, uh, if you hate this all together, <laughs> whatever you think, just put it down there in the comment section. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up, and I will see you in the future.